your role to play in the Lottie Moon's missions offering. Be in prayer for our missionaries around the world and to just keep your heart and your mind open to what God is leading you into doing. We've got a few announcements this week. Even though it's the week of Christmas, um, we are going to be um, uh, having our business meeting tonight at 6.30. Uh, we're voting on the 2016 budget there, so please come and join us for that. Also, uh, there'll be deacons meeting at 5 o'clock. Um, now, Wednesday, uh, the church office is going to close at noon, 1230 actually, so we're going to be open at the church office Monday, Tuesday, and until noon on Wednesday. Uh, there will be no Wednesday night activities this week, uh, but there will be Christmas Eve service at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary, all right? So be sure and make your plans for that. Many ask how long does the, the service last? It lasts probably 30 to 40 minutes usually, tops at 45 and um, so come and join us on Thursday evening for the Christmas Eve service, keeping that in mind. Um, the next week will be kind of the same schedule. We again, um, the week of New Year's, will not be having Wednesday night activities. And so keep that in mind uh, for the coming holidays. Gives you a chance to rest, gives you a chance to spend time with family. A lot of us are traveling, so keeping all that in mind. Um, and then the new year, we'll just start all over being busy again, okay? Lord, we anxiously await not just Christmas Day, not the end of the holiday season. We anxiously, see, anxiously await for you to come. As we've celebrated this time, Lord, of remembering your birth and your coming to earth to save us, let's always keep that hope alive that you promised us you would come again. That just as you ascended into heaven before the eyes of the disciples and others in Jerusalem that day of Pentecost, so too you'll return. Every eye will see you, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We're hungering and thirsting for that day, Lord. And we pray, Father, this day that you would speak to us. We pray that our hearts would be open to your words, to the music, that all of this would be a great time of connecting with you and speaking and shouting to you and pouring our hearts out to you and hearing from you. Because, Lord, we've come to worship you and you alone. We're so grateful. You allow us to be your children. It's in the holy name of Jesus we say it all. Amen. All right, if you have your Bibles with you, up to John chapter 3. Gospel of John chapter 3. At the end of the, after the message and the invitation, of course, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper together. And so while during this time, we want to keep our hearts open to what the Lord is saying to us. Keep our hearts prayerful. And uh, we've been kind of preaching out of these last five, six verses in John chapter, not the last verses in the chapter, but this little section here of John three sixteen through 21. And um, we've been reading them each week and kind of taking them two at a time. And so now we come to the end. So John three 16, we're going to read verses 16 through 21. John 3, verses 16 through 21. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Let's pray. We love you, Lord. And we love the light that shines at Christmas. And we rejoice to see that light we as a people have been wandering in darkness, but on us the light has shined, Lord, and we rejoice to see it. At this time, Lord, we ask you to speak to us. If there's one here that has never believed in this simple gospel story, that today would be the day they begin to believe. For others who've grown hard over the years or through circumstances have caused them to drift, that today could be a day that says, you know, Lord, I'm coming back. I want to be close to you again. We pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Rejoicing in the light. Christmas is all about light. On that dark night in Bethlehem, a light was shining from the manger. 
the shepherds who are out in the field, light suddenly shines on them at midnight or whatever time it might have been. It was dark and the light suddenly, the glory of the Lord shines round about them and the angels begin to sing. When we think of Christmas, we think of lights. And that light, most of all, is the hope of all of us. That when Jesus tells us that He's our light, that each one of us, no matter how bad it is, if you're like us, stuck in that mall traffic, you get down there to the line at Burlington Coat Factory, and you go, oh great, they got four registers open, which is twice as many as Walmart. And you get in that line, and there's like 54 people for the four registers. Thankfully, it only took 25 minutes to get through that line. And when this happens, we're just sitting there going, ugh! Why is Christmas so stressful? Where is all the religious aspects of it when we're out there fighting the crowds? We've got to fight sometimes to keep that light shining in us, don't we? It's a struggle. We remember that Christmas is because God, because God gave us His Son. And God didn't give us His Son so the world could be condemned. He gave us His Son so the world could be saved. And that we choose our condemnation. Because if we don't believe, we're condemned already. It's not our good outweighing our bad. It's what we've done with this light, this Jesus. God says literally, you know, there's really basically two paths you can go on. There's the path of Christ, the light, the way, the truth. And then there's whatever else you want out there, which in God's eyes are just the same path. You might say, well, there's a path of Buddhism. There's a path of Hinduism. There's the path of this and that. God says, no, there's two paths, belief and unbelief. And as we choose those two paths, he makes them very clear to us in this passage as we come to the end of our little section here. Everyone practicing evil hates the light in verse 20. But in verse 21, he who does the truth comes to the light. There's your two paths. Whichever one you're on, you got a choice today. So there's two paths, one of darkness and one of light. And as we compare verses 20 and 21 a little bit, we see that in verse 20, everyone practicing evil hates the light. There are those out there that you wonder why they won't come, why they don't believe, what, what is wrong with them. And the simple fact of the matter is, no matter unless you talk to them till you're blue in the face, they simply hate the light. It's too bright. As we see in an earlier verse, it's because the, the light shines on their darkness and their deeds get exposed. We don't want to see that. So they hate the light. They hate the truth. But those in the other path, they approach the light. It says in verse 21, he who does the truth comes to the light. We don't fear it. We're walking in the darkness on that cold winter night and suddenly we see a light shining through the woods. Maybe it's a fire. Maybe it's a cabin. We get closer and closer. We're drawn to that light. We've nothing to hide. We want to come close to the light. In the same way, Jesus Christ, that light shines in the darkness to each of us, drawing us, get us close to Him. Secondly, those in the darkness fear exposure of their works. Those who walk in the light have no shame. In verse 20, it tells us, those that do evil, they, they do not come to the light lest their deeds be exposed. But in verse 21... He who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen. We're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God to salvation. These two paths God has set out for us. When the holidays get to you, let's remember, let's go to the light. When the stresses come at us, let's go towards the light because there's no shame in this. You know what? I didn't have enough money for presents this year. The bills are going to overwhelm me. You know what? A lot of us are in that same boat. As long as we're loving Christ, as long as we're serving Him, as long as we're following Him, there's no shame in your shortcomings. You know why? Because when you're in the darkness, your deeds are simply evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light. But the guy in the light, look what he says. His deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. You see, when we look at these two paths people can be on, it's not about who's better and who's worse. It's not about who's a better person, who's less of a person, who's a criminal and a felon, and who's perfect and a goody two-shoes. The difference is the person in the light, their deeds are done in God, through God, with God. 
We go through the Bible and we see big words like redemption and salvation and propitiation. We see big words like justification. We see all these words and we wonder, I don't know what those words mean. Well, just pay attention to the little ones then. The person in the light, they do their deeds in God. That God is in them, doing it through them, with them, for them. That this is the difference between the darkness and the light. This is the difference between having the Lord and not having Him. This is the difference between celebrating Christmas and just getting stressed out. We realize that God is with us. That word, Emmanuel, means God with us. Therefore, everything we do is done with Him, in Him, through Him. My good deeds don't outweigh my bad. It's just that what I do, I do in the Lord. And because God empowers us, God indwells us, God does it through us, that makes all the difference. And this is the difference Christmas makes. In coming to the light now, that light's not just shining around about us, that light is in us. Christ is not just out there, He is in us. That this child of Bethlehem has come to dwell in our hearts when we cry out through faith. Whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When we come to that point of believing, the light comes in, shining in our hearts. We rejoice in this Christmas light. We rejoice in all that Christ means as He is the light. For instance, the Christmas light can fulfill us, or fulfills an ancient promise. This light is so important as we mentioned earlier. Just like when you're wandering in the dark and looking for something. Isaiah tells us in nine verse, chapter 9 verse 2, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. He's got a picture of a group of people wandering in darkness. And in a day and age without electricity, darkness is not downtown Corpus with all its lights on. In a day and age without electricity, darkness is out there with all you've got is the moon and the stars, if there's any of that. You're truly wandering. You're truly bumping into stuff. You've got no point of reference. The people who dwelt in the shadow of death. Remember Psalm 23? You're walking through that valley of the shadow of death. That means there is menace on every side. There are threats. There's danger. Disaster. The gauntlet we're running our life through. Where we're running through, it feels like everybody at work, everybody at school, they're all taking a shot at us as we run down the middle of them. Those people in the shadow of death who think it's all over on them, a light is shined. Isaiah lived more than 700 years before Christ was born. It was an ancient promise that God never forgot. In fact, going back to the beginning of time, God made an ancient promise. Genesis chapter 3, where He promised Adam and Eve, after they had fallen, that there would come a point where though the serpent bruised their heel, the serpent's head would be crushed. That promise is fulfilled in that stable in Bethlehem. That the Savior came. When he told the shepherds, Behold, to you this day is born not just a baby, not just a man, but is born a Savior. There's our hope. The fulfilling light of the ancient promises. Christmas light is something rejoicing because it means a visit from God. Now I love St. Nicholas. And one of the interesting things about St. Nicholas is that at a certain council of church leaders and bishops and elders, one man who had a heretical view of the Trinity enraged St. Nick so much, he punched him in the nose. It was great. That's the Santa Claus I believe in, right? <laughs> the one who'd punch a heretic. St. Nicholas, Santa Claus, whoever you've got out there, we've got the legend that he comes to visit us. The spirit of Christmas is a wonderful thing, but let's remember this. Christmas means not a visit from a man in a red suit. Christmas means a visit from God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. John chapter 1, verse 4. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. And it was the true light. It gives to light to every man coming into the world. So here is Christ... The Word taking on flesh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is light. 
Scientists will tell us that light is, you know, photons and things and waves and all of that. No, the true light is Jesus. The source of all light is Him. He was the true light which gives light to every man coming into this world. Without Christ you have no light in your heart, none in your soul. You have no hope for eternity. When we talk about the joy that comes in rejoicing in the light, this is the rejoicing because the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the true light, the light that was the life of men. This Jesus has come, a visit from God Himself. Encased in human flesh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And when we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. There's a picture about the time we moved to Corpus when my parents came to see us the first time, back in 07, I guess it was. And me and my dad standing next to each other, and then my brother goes, which one of you is dad? Because we look so much alike in that picture. Last time I went home, uh, saw my niece and started noticing how much she looked like her mother. And I, since she's only 25, I mentioned that casually. But you look just like your mother now. And uh, we start doing that, don't we? We hit an age where we start to look. And look what it says about Jesus. We beheld His glory. Maybe at the transfiguration or just looking at the light of God in Christ. We beheld His glory. We looked upon Jesus. And it was the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. He looks just like His Father. That when you're looking at Jesus in that manger, it's His Father all over. That when you look at Jesus healing the sick, feeding the multitude, when you look at Jesus healing the blind man, lifting up the lame and watching them dance, when you look at Jesus upon that cross, He looks like His Father. We beheld His glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. So when we look at this manger, we see the light because this is God among us. The visit from God on Christmas. We rejoice in the Christmas light because it brings salvation. As we said, a Savior was born. Many songs at Christmas, we wonder if Mary was troubled in her heart as she pondered those things. Because it says, after the shepherds left, Mary was troubled by all these things. Starting to think, my son is the Savior. The angel appeared to me at his incarnate, at his, at the, uh, uh, when I became pregnant, the angel appeared and gave me that message. And now, I stop and think. That whole Isaiah 53 passage he was wounded for our iniquities. He was bruised for our sins. By His stripes we are healed. Not my son. But Christmas brings salvation. The deeds of the light that we run to is because this light brings us salvation. John 12, 46. I have come as a light into the world. And whosoever believes in me would not abide in darkness. Because, you know, those people in darkness, their deeds are evil. Those of us in the light, our deeds are perfect. No, our deeds are just in God. Because we believe we are no longer in the darkness. Because He's the light of the world that's come to us. We should not abide in the darkness. Christ has come. The salvation has come. There's no condemnation. Jesus has brought us Christmas salvation. And finally, Christmas shines the glory of God. God's glory shines out on this Christmas day. God's glory is spoken in that manger. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. It is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We love the light because of this passage. Because when God wanted, you know, going back to Genesis 1-1, it was God who said, let there be light shining out of that darkness. And as we'll see during the Lord's Supper time, Jesus was there at creation. As we see in John chapter 1, Jesus was there at creation. God commanded light to shine out of that darkness at the very beginning, and He commands it to shine out of the darkness now. And it has shown in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. We come to know God through Jesus. That when we're seeing that face in the manger, 
When Mary kisses her baby, she's kissing the face of God. He gives light to the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. That when you look upon Jesus, you're seeing all that God is. Why do we preach Jesus so much? Why do we talk about Jesus as if He's God? Because He is. There is God the Father, Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He who sees the Son has seen the Father. This light is what attracts us. This wonder. This thing that ought to make our mortal flesh tremble and keep silence before Him. To realize what a great and wonderful Savior this is that He would come to earth to be with us. We sing joy to the world. We sing it every Christmas. We've heard it several times of the holidays. And the enthusiasm gets weaker and weaker. Perhaps when we sing joy to the world, have we really heard the gospel? Maybe we're still in darkness. Maybe that's where our enthusiasm goes on the Christmas carols. For our sakes, Jesus Christ became human. For our sakes, us sinners, Jesus became a companion of tax collectors and prostitutes. For our sakes, we rejoice because this Savior did not consider murderers and thugs and failures and drunks and addicts and the immoral and those who are addicted. God did not look upon them and say, they're not good enough for my kingdom. No, He sent a Savior who sat down and eats with those people. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Because he steps right into the darkness, into the darkest spots. He doesn't stay on the nice side of town. He goes out where the sinners are. By the way, there's sinners on the nice side of town too. This Jesus went to a cross. How much did he love sinners? He was crucified between two thieves. And right there as he dies, why do we sing joy to the world? Because with those two thieves, one cussing and railing on him. If you're so good, why don't you get us down from here? And the other one crying out, Lord, remember me when you come into your throne. And what words did he hear from that light? He heard before the sun is set today, you'll be with me in paradise. That's why we rejoice at Christmas. That's the kind of Savior we've received. Where's the path to this joy? The church of Jesus should always answer, how can I find joy at Christmas? We have not seen Him, but we love Him. And even though we do not see Him now, we believe in Him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. We receive the outcome of our faith, the salvation of our souls. That's why we read those verses this morning. That this Christ whom you only see in pictures, whom you only see in cards, whom you only see in nativity scenes. This Christ we have seen. We've seen His light. We've seen His glory. We see Him in His Word. And He's crying out to each of us, Believe. Whosoever will, come. I came to shine light into darkness. Do you feel your light is in the dark? Do you feel like you're wandering and that you're lost? He came to tax collectors, prostitutes. He came to murderers and thieves and rebels. He came to the self-righteous. He came to those who didn't even think they needed Him. And to all of them He gave opportunity. And as His Spirit flows through His Word this morning, as the Holy Spirit dwells among us, he comes to each of us and says, you too can come. Whatever excuse you may have in saying, I can't come to Jesus, that light shines into your darkness and says, come. If you still want to stay away, you need to take a hard look at yourself because it says, those who love the darkness, their deeds are evil and they don't want to come to Him. And it's not that your bad outweighs your good, it's that you don't want to believe. Read verse 18 again. He that believes not is condemned already. There's where your evil comes from. But he that believes not, the Bible says there's no condemnation for them that are in Christ. We rejoice at Christmas because there's a light shining. That light isn't just a star. That light is a Savior who's come to give you hope. 
And if we get back to that message that Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin, according to the Scripture, lived a sinless life and died according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose from the grave according to what the Bible says, we believe that. Christmas changes, as does our new year and the rest of our life. We pass from condemnation to heaven. From hell to blessedness. And John 3 is all about giving you a choice. We've been reading this passage the month of December and it's about jumping in on a conversation between a man named Nicodemus and Jesus. And they're talking about how to start all over again, how to be born again. Maybe you're ready for a new start. Christmas promises us, coming on the verge of the new year, a new start. Christmas promises us, it shines a light and says, you can come to this light. All your sin, all your sorrow, whatever you think that's keeping you back, that light is shining on you. People who walk in darkness, upon them a light is shine. People living in the shadow of death, that light is for them. That light is for you. We're going to bow our heads, and after we pray, we're going to sing. And while we sing, if this is the day you want to call upon Christ, we invite you to come. Come tell me about it. If God has led you to this church, come tell me about it. All right? Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, We come before you trembling a little bit. Trembling with the excitement that our Savior lives. Trembling with the fear of how awesome and holy and righteous you are and how unworthy we are. We come to you trembling with joy that because of Jesus we can come before you and not fear rejection. We are unworthy, but we tremble with joy for how great your grace and mercy are. I hope somebody sees that mercy today. I hope somebody in this room experiences it for the first time and says, Yes, Jesus, I need this. I'm stumbling in the dark. I'm living in the shadow of death. I need some light, some direction, some something. Shine your light, Lord. Let them know you're the light and that believing in you, they're not in darkness anymore. That we can pray a prayer as simple as, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need your salvation. I believe you died for my sins and I believe you rose from the grave on the third day. Lord, in your word, you promised us that if we confess you with our mouth and say yes to Jesus... And believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. We shall be saved. You tell us that, Lord. And so today we're believing. And maybe someone for the first time. Give them the courage to step forward, Lord, and follow you in, in baptism and the church membership. Give them hope and strength to face tomorrow and the coming days. The loneliness they may feel, the rejection that comes. God bless these people. Draw them close to your heart. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. So we're going to sing here in a second. If you're ready to follow Jesus, come down here and I'll pray with you about it. If you're a Christian who's already a believer, but you feel like God has led you to this church, come down here and we'll, uh, we'll present you to the church and we'll accept you by membership, change of letter, or by statement. But we invite you to come. So we're going to sing. Would you all stand? As we sing, you're invited to come. I'm
with us today at worshiping with us. Uh, hope you have a Merry Christmas. Uh, Christmas Eve service will be Thursday evening, Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Get here a little early. Um, there will be candles and candy canes or something out there in the foyer for you. You'll want a candle for doing the, the candlelight part of the service. So be sure and get here a little bit early, like 15 minutes early or so. Be nice, all right? And then uh, um, we'll have a good time there. That's right. We have the Lord's Supper today. I forgot again. Okay. Would you be seated? Deacons, would you make your way up to the front? Mm-hmm.